Now you're on. Now my mic's on. Yeah, I, I redid the mics, and I forgot to send it to all the different shots. So we're going to reset here. Well, you can keep going. Hello there, folks. Welcome back to another edition of Fast Facts Live. I am your host, your quiz master of ceremonies, Dan O'Keefe, joined today by not only our producer, Tom. Hi, Tom. Hi. And Charty, our scorekeeper and greatest fear, but also a fan. Literally, we have a fan blowing in the background now. If you oh, can yeah. hear it, that's great. Hold if on, you can't hear it. Hey, Siri, turn my fan off. He's turning his fan off with technology. No, it's because the cord is behind the couch. Oh, uh, OK. I don't feel Sorry, good. one second. Still trying. <laughs> <laughs> Siri told me she's still trying to turn my fan off. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> It turned off. The fan turned off, in case you were wondering. Um, we're off to a very, we are off to a very good start. <laughs> Google Slides, which is what we use to do the actual slides on the screen, they had an update. So now there's that presenter view thing that they have in PowerPoint. But now we have it on our iPad that I read the questions off of. So now the slide takes up about 12% of the screen, and the rest is white space for notes. No one wants that. Larry, Google, I know you're listening. Change it back. Just, just go back. <sighs> Anyways, want to go over the rules? Sure. OK. <laughs> if you haven't played this game before, here's how you play it. We have five rounds with five questions each. You have 30 seconds for each question. I never remember what comes after that. Double or nothing. Double or nothing. If you think you did real well in a round, you can double or nothing it, which doubles your score if you get them all right. But if you even get one wrong, you get nothing. We also have a Hail Mary question at the end that's worth half of your current score. So if you have 12 points, you get it right, then have 18 points. But if you get it wrong, you still have 12 points. It's just a fun way to spice things up at the end. And now that we've gotten through that, let's do a reading of the team name. I have the iPad, yes. Can you Don't worry. It and see if it works. Mm hmm As you can tell, we're having a great day today. It's been a week. It's been a it's only Wednesday. It's been a week. Lemon, it's Wednesday. Yes. Hey, uh, it's after six, you're not in a suit. What are you, a farmer? <laughs> 30 Rock comes that is to my Peacock. Favorite quote from 30 Rock. <laughs> Charty, just to double check, do we have 15 teams? Awesome, and now, in no particular order, except for the fact that it is alphabetical order, here are the teams. We have Drawing a Blank, Featuring Boomer, Gosh Darn Adobe Cancel Fee, His Legs Is Rotisserie, again, one word, I'm so confused by you, Hot Toddies, Is This the Krusty Krab, Joe and the Ferbers, Karen Requests the Fast Facts Manager, <laughs> Mac Men, Mirabella Madness, Quiz Cats, Sausage Snacker, Suck It Trebek, The Right Winks, Vanilla Bean Vice Team, and We Like We TV. I'm almost 100% sure that We Like We TV is my parents because that's what Law & Order is airing on over the weekends. Am I correct, Charty? Uh, Charty says probably. They screeched, but for some reason they screech only in my earshot. It's like a dog whistle but it's a Dan whistle. Can we just get on with yeah, it? Yeah, I'm going to get on with it. I'm, we have no set times, but I've run long. Anyways, the first <laughs> round. It's only been five minutes. I know. First round is the Roaring Twenties. Somehow the 1920s are shaping up to be better than the 2020s, and that is not good. Anyways, first question. In 1920, the 19th Amendment became law, providing women in America with what right? You have 30 seconds. Bada bing, bada boom, we're back for question two. And that question is, 
What pilot rose to fame after he flew the first non-stop transatlantic flight in his plane, the Spirit of St. Louis? 30 seconds. Moving on to question number three. In 1927, Ford discontinued what model car, which was probably the only car you ever learned about in history class? Unlike me, I learned a lot about the Lamborghini Countach. And question number four. What famous cartoon character first appeared in 1928 in the short Steamboat Willie? And if you've been thinking, hey, this round is kind of easy. Maybe they're going easy on us this week. <laughs> Question five. <laughs> In 2008, ESPN named Red Grange as the greatest college football player of all time. From 1923 to 1925, which university, which state university's football team did he play for? Oh, boy. buzzer sound. And that is it for round f one. I almost said round five. Oh wow, God. that would have been a really quick game. We've only been going for nine minutes. Um, before we move on to round number two, send in your answers. If you think you did real well, if you know a lot about Red Grange and early 20th century college football, try and do a double or nothing or not. It's your choice, but you only get one during the game. You don't have to use it, but it's always fun to do it. Uh, before we move on, I have a message from last week's winner. He is not able to play this week because he is at work, uh, but his message, it's very sweet and very heartfelt. Uh, it says, good luck to all the players. Y'all can eat butt. Love, Free State of Jones, the video game. So thank you for that, Free State of Jones, the video game. What an inspiring message to pass along in these trying times, isn't it? Sure. Speaking of inspiring messages to pass along in these trying times, round number two, shuttles. The last space shuttle launch was nine years ago today. Isn't that fun? Incredibly fun. Yeah. Guess who wrote the last category and guess who wrote this category? <laughs> Bet you can't tell. Question number one, who was the only sitting American president to have witnessed a space shuttle launch? He might have been standing, but he was the current president.
Question number two. Question number two, if this will load, I never hit it. Uh, is the keyboard dead? Is it dead? No, it's on. It should have 100% on. It should. Here, Here we, we go. go. A number of space shuttle missions landed on something other than a concrete runway. What surface did they land on? Question number three. The U.S. lost two shuttles. Challenger exploded upon takeoff, and which shuttle burned up on re-entry? 30 seconds. Before we move on to question number four, Hey everyone, doesn't my butt look great? <laughs> oh, this Anyways, is aha. In case you're wondering what technical issue that was, the program that we used to cast this crashed. So well, actually, what? The the program that we used to make the show crash. Mm hmm. So it's always something different. Give me a minute. Can you? Can or something. I'm supposed I to riff. To, I have to resize everything. Okay, Thomas to resize everything, so I have, I have free reign for like two minutes, and that's dangerous because yeah, we would, can't. Who would pick you to host a television show? Ugh. We can't move on to the next question until we get everything squared away. So in the meantime, I need to direct my ire specifically at one member of a team that is playing right now. Uh, they are a member of the Right Winks. Um, they ha do happen to be our social media coordinator, Mallory Winkler, who is doing a yeah, great so, job. So, so don't piss her off. <laughs> but because we're now broadcasting in 1080p or 720p, we're in HD, in case you can see my pores now, Tom texted her and asked, how great does Dan look? And she responded, like a slob. Words hurt, Mallory. I will tell my father, who is running this country club, what you said about me, and you will not be able to use the second pool. All right, we should be good. Do We're good wanna, to go. Do you want to go back and just quickly reread the first two? just to give Yes, you just to give you a brief refresh. Question number one was, who was the only sitting American president to have witnessed a space shuttle launch? And question number two, was a number of space shuttle missions landed on something other than a concrete runway. What surface did they land on? And finally, question number three, the U.S. lost two shuttles. Challenger, which exploded on takeoff, and which other shuttle, which burned up on re-entry? Now that we've done a brief refresh, hopefully things are rocking, rolling, and... Re I just hit the wrong button that time. That was my fault. You don't understand how low my heart drops. <laughs> this is great. We're just having fun with it now. It's having fun. Question uh, number four. Didn't we do three? Weren't we on three? We did three. Okay. Yeah, because we were on the we were coming back from that. Cool. If we didn't, well, I read it to you. Uh, which one of these space shuttles never flew in space? Columbia, Challenger, Discovery, 
Enterprise, Atlantis, or Endeavor? And finally, we can end this round that's taken twice as long as the first round. <gasps> Question number five. Discovery flew which broken satellite into low Earth orbit, useless until it was serviced three years later by Endeavor. And just like me, it was useless for three years. And that brings us to the end of round two. Send in your answers to Charty if you think you did really well because you have a very specific knowledge on space shuttles. Double or nothing it if you haven't used it already. If you have used it, don't even try it. I, I can find you. We have your phone numbers. We do have their phone numbers. That's true. It's so weird having it cut now because I switched it to cut. Uh -huh. So everything's so much quicker. <laughs> oh, well, that's good. Uh, we're going to take a quick break, as we always do. This is a planned break. We'll be back in a little bit with the answers to rounds one and two and more fun here on Fast Facts Live. Don't go anywhere.
Hey everyone, welcome back to Fast Facts Live. It's me again. Oh good, your audio works. Surprising. I know, your audio never works. Oh, I was saying surprising to the fact that I came back. But yes, yeah. it is good that my audio is working. Yeah. Um, if, any, if any of you teams out there want to be featured on so our social media feeds, because you just love playing along with Fast Facts Live, let us know. Tell Charty, send in a picture of yourself playing along with Fast Facts Live to Charty. We'll post it up on the internets, Twitter, Instagram, the Zuckerberg one. Face smash? Face smash. Face smash. That's it. Yeah, that's it. We'll post it. We'll share it. We like spreading the love, spreading the word. If you have any videos of yourself playing, send that too. Probably don't text that. Like direct message us on Facebook or something because videos over text always end up looking really weird. That's because you have an Android, Dan. Yeah, it's because I'm sending it over SMS and not iMessage. It's MMS, Multimedia Message Service. service? What's SMS? Single Media Service? Uh, service? Sim simple Messaging Service. Well, yes, I'm simple. Anyways, we're going to give a brief score update of the top five teams. Uh, in no particular order, the top five teams so are. Ranked. Yeah, but I'm not going to read them in that way, Thomas. <laughs> The top five teams are Mirabella Madness, The Right Winks, Gosh Darn Adobe Cancel Fee, Karen Requests the Fast Facts Manager, and Joe and the Ferbers. So, good job to all those teams. Now we're going to move on to the answers for the first two rounds, and they are, for the first round, the Roaring Twenties. In 1920, the 19th Amendment became law, providing women in America with what right? Of course, the right to vote. What pilot rose to fame after he flew the first nonstop transatlantic flight in his plane, the Spirit of St. Louis? Charles Lindbergh. In 1927, Ford discontinued what model car, which was probably the only car you ever learned about in history class. That was, of course, the Model T Ford. But when I ever hear a model car, I think about an actual Model T wearing a bikini. Maybe I need therapy. Number four, what famous cartoon character first appeared in 1928 in the short Steamboat Willie? That was, of course, Mortimer Mouse, as he was originally named, but we all know him as Mickey Mouse now. And finally, the easiest question of this category. In 2008, ESPN named Red Grange as the greatest college football player of all time. From 1923 to 1925, what state university's football team did he play for? That was, of course, the University of Illinois Fighting Illini, probably like the last good player. <laughs> Look, my favorite pastime over the past few years was watching the University of Illinois Northwestern football games. That's always the last game of the season. Uh, and seeing how few people were in the stands. Because if they played in Illinois, Illinois is usually terrible, even with Lovey Smith and his power beard. Um, I think they got it to like 38 fans in the crowd at one point. I'm going, Tom. Category number two was shuttles. Ooh, I spat there. Call me King George III. Hamilton. Topical. Ha-ha! I opened TikTok today, and my first five TikToks were all about Hamilton. <laughs> Anyways, who was the only sitting president, another topical thing, to have witnessed a space shuttle launch? That was, of course, Bill Clinton. Question number two. A number of space shuttle missions landed on something other than a concrete runway. What surface did they land on? A dry lake bed or a desert? Either or. The US lost two shuttles, Challenger, which exploded on takeoff, and which other shuttle, which burned up on reentry? That was the space shuttle Columbia. I believe it was in 2004? Uh, sure. Around then. Um, we do our research. Which one of these space shuttles never flew in space? Columbia, Challenger, Discovery, Enterprise, Atlantis, or Endeavor? Enterprise. That doesn't fly for another 300 years, guys. Come on. <laughs> and finally, Discovery flew which broken satellite into low Earth orbit, useless, until it was serviced three years later by Endeavor? The Hubble Space Telescope. Unlike the Humble Space Telescope, which you'll never hear about. <laughs> that was a good one. That was a good that one. That was a good one. Anyways, <laughs> moving on to the next round. Famous Marquette alumni. For some of you playing, this should be really easy. 
for others, you should have gone to Marquette. Well. Or not, honestly. They're pretty broad. These are pretty broad. <laughs> Again, one of these is hard. Very hard. Anyways, which Saturday Night Live alumnus, who may have lived in a van down by the river, graduated from Marquette University in the year 1986? And we're back. In case you were wondering about films from 1986, I have with me the Encyclopedia of Film. Uh, and it says that Nine and a Half Weeks with Kim Basinger and Mickey Rourke. I almost said Rooney. That would have been fun. 1986 Mickey Rooney. Anyways, I brought this book as a prop, and I'm not going to use it because it's really heavy and hard to skim through. Anyways, question number two. This infamous senator graduated from Marquette Law in 1935 and later became one of the biggest faces during the Red Scare. Who was he? Question number three. I, I didn't look up 1935 films because it was too heavy. Number three, Dwayne Wade is not only the greatest player in Marquette history, he is also arguably the greatest player in which NBA franchise's history? You have 30 seconds. Because of the way that Tom was counting down while we were doing that last question, I'm going to read the next question in the voice that he was doing. Which most recent former governor of Wisconsin attended but did not graduate Marquette? Which makes sense considering his views on education? And our fifth and final question. Nicholas D'Augusto graduated in 2002. Before he attended Marquette, he had a small role in the 1990 film, I'm sorry, the 1999 film, Election, starring Matthew Broderick and what future Oscar-winning actress? 30 seconds. And that is the end of round three. So please be sure. You're right, it is. Yes. <laughs> please be sure to send in your answers to Charty. I say please because, you know, courtesy is nice. Yeah. Before we move on to round number four, we have a special announcement to make for you. Not special, more of a reminder than anything. 
I, I, I don't know what this is, so I'm very excited. This Sunday. Oh, right. Yeah, this Sunday. I forgot about it until Tom mentioned it during the last <laughs> round. I'm going to say that again. Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. This Sunday, July 12th, we will be doing a special edition of Fast Facts Live. Sports, entirely sports. You know how Jeopardy Sports was on Crackle? Well, Fast Facts Live Sports is on whatever you're watching this on. We'll be doing it on everything. It's going to be all sports related. And yes, professional wrestling is a sport. Anything else to add? Uh, let us know how many questions you want us to do. We've written a bunch of questions. Uh, we've gotten anywhere between the normal 25 and some people want 50. So we might do it in the middle. We might do whatever. So let us know on socials or text Charty and be like, hey, I want to play and I want more questions. Or I like the same number of questions. Just let us know and we'll accommodate the most people. Yeah, we're going to put up a poll on our Twitter page at and Fast Facebook. Facts Live and on Facebook where yeah. you can vote on it to see uh, what is everybody's favorite. Yeah, we got to do that quick, though, because then we have to, you know, write, write, the, write, questions write the questions and do the show. Yeah, um, it's actually all going to be one question. And the question is, what's Hulk Hogan's real name? It's Terry. Oh. Yeah. Anyways, round number four. The doctor is in. You have to name these film and TV doctors. Not the name of the show, the name of the doctors. If you only know their last name, that's fine, but, or whatever name they're, no. Yeah, if you know their last name, that's fine. If it's only the first name, though, that doesn't count. Well, if you can accurately name the character. Okay, fine. You know, I'm not the one who keeps score. If you can accurately name the character. We've made it broad enough that the Supreme Court will have to decide this contextually hundreds of years from now. Ouch. Question number one, who's this sexy piece of meat? Name the doc. Moving on to doctor number two. Ah, oh, look at him. Who is he? Have you eaten an apple today? Apparently not, because look at all these doctors. Who? And doctor number four. Ah, no! I well, told you. I told you it would happen. Now you got a special preview of who doctor number five is. Who is this one, though? And our fifth and final doctor is actually played by a real life doctor. So that's a fun extra piece of trivia for you.
And that is the end of our doctors category. I'm slightly upset that we didn't have Dr. Nick from The Simpsons. You'll get over it. If only because I didn't get the chance to say, Hiya, everybody! But I got that chance anyway. Look at you go. I'm not sorry. We'll be back in a little bit. We're going to have the answers for rounds three and round four. Then we'll have round five and our Hail Mary question. So don't go anywhere. We've got more trivia for you on Fast Facts Live.
And we're back. It's almost spring. What? In spring, the weather's lovely. It elevates the mood. What? I'm so confused. And even more important, Please stop. there's a plentitude of food. You're scaring me. So if you're feeling peckish, so, send help. You can go for seconds. Dana's, even Dana's, thirds. Dana's rhyming. Winters for the birds. No, it isn't. It's an expression. That's from A Year with Frog and Toad, a show I was not in, but I saw about 94 times. <laughs> <laughs> oh, Charty is flapping her wings to tell me to go faster because she uh, does not please. enjoy frog nor toad. Ah, uh, fine. Let's go through the answers. Oh, hold on. <laughs> oh, I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I was ready to go. You were I telling me to, to go right on. <sighs> I'm Tom. I have to hit the right button. I don't know why you're an uh, upper crust British man in my impression of you. You know what? That's better than what I currently am. You know what? That's better than what I currently am. I'm a lower crust non-British man, woman. I prefer cauliflower crust. I don't, that's disgusting. Anyways, <laughs> what Saturday Night Live alumnus may have lived in a van down by the river and graduated from Marquette in 86? Chris Farley. Uh, this infamous senator graduated from Marquette Law in 1935 and later became one of the biggest faces of the Red Scare. Who was he? Joseph McCarthy. Dwayne Wade is not only the greatest player in Marquette history, he is also, arguably, the greatest player in which NBA franchise's history. That is, of course, the Miami Heat. Pictured behind him is LeBron James riding on his coattails. Number four, which most recent former governor of Wisconsin attended but did not graduate Marquette, which makes sense considering his views on education. That was, of course, the human cockroach, Scott Walker. Thank you for coming to my TED Talk. And five, Nicholas D'Augusto graduated in 2002. Before he attended Marquette, he had a small role in the 1999 film Election, starring Matthew Broderick and what future Oscar-winning actress that was Reese Witherspoon. It's a good thing that she wasn't eating steak because then she would have to be Reese without her spoon. Thank you, thank you, that one was real bad. The doctor is in. Ugh. Dr. Ian Malcolm from Jurassic Park, The Lost World Jurassic Park, and Jurassic World Fallen Kingdom. He's like a fine wine. He gets sexier with age, just like wine does. This is Dr. Fraser Crane from, of course, Cheers and then Fraser, and the little-known spinoff, Mayonnaise. This is, of course, Dr. Benjamin Franklin Hawkeye Pierce as portrayed by Alan Alda in the TV show, portrayed by Donald Sutherland in the film, which I cannot find anywhere. Oh, I have it. <laughs> <laughs> Moving on. <laughs> this is Dr. Evil from the three Austin Powers films, International Man of Mystery, The Spy Who Shagged Me, and Goldmember. And finally, Dr. Amy Farrah Fowler from The Big Bang Theory. You should remember her name because remember how Sheldon says her name every time? Dr. Amy Farrah Fowler. I think. Yeah. Yeah. Anyways, score update. Now that we're going into round five, in no particular order, our top five teams are, ooh, I actually give six because we have a tie. Mirabella Madness, We Like We TV, Vanilla Bean Vice Team, Joe and the Ferbers, the Right Winks, and gosh darn Adobe cancel fee. So it's close though. They're all within a couple of points of each other. It's anyone's game. So let's move on to round five. Toss up, grag bag, grag bag? Yeah. Grag bag. We need to sell grag bags. We need to sell things. We do. So we can get legit equipment so that nothing crashes and breaks. There's literally nothing I want more than the ceiling to crash. Not injuring us, but in the, our last show ever, like the ceiling crashes behind us. Yeah, that would make sense. That'd be very fitting. That would track, that would, that would track. Anyways. What is a group of sloths called?
Question number two. What was Dwight Eisenhower's middle name? Moving on to question number three. Which golf tournament, rescheduled just yesterday, pins the United States versus Europe every other year? I don't care, but you go ahead. It hurts, Dan. Questiones numero cuatro. Wow. How do you say question in Spanish? Oh, God. I don't know. You just add the upside down question mark at the beginning. Yeah. Mm -hmm. The newest national park is White Sands National Park, partially encompassing a nuclear missile range in what southwestern state? Moving on to Pregunta Número Cinco. CONCACAF is the governing body in North and Central America of what sport? This is a real sport. And that is the end of round five. When I said that's a real sport, I meant it as a as joke because I was going to say, unlike golf, which is an activity, but I have been, I'm incorrect there. Golf is a sport, just like cheerleading is a sport. A lot of things are sports. If you do physical effort in it, it's a sport. Power walking, oh my God, people get so injured in power walking. Those Anyways, Achilles injuries. right? Well, it's because your body's not supposed to move that fast right. without that, running. In that direction. It destroys you. Oh, my. Because you have to keep one foot on the ground at all times, but they can't have electronic checkers to keep your feet on the ground because everybody cheats in power walking. Ugh. Anyways. Save it for the sports episode. Yeah. Wait for our power walking category. <laughs> it's our niche sports episode. Uh, now it's time for our Hail Mary question. Be sure to send in your answers to Charty. If you want to do a double or nothing on that and you haven't used it already, go ahead. You can't double or nothing your Hail Mary, despite how much you want to. Hail Mary is worth 50% of your current score if you get it right. If you get it wrong, it's worth nothing. So, whatever. Anyways, going back to the Roaring Twenties, the 1920s are sometimes referred to as the Jazz Age. What great American author, whose last novel, The Last Tycoon, was finished after his death, coined the term. You have 30 seconds to quote Hart, hit me with your best shot.
Hello? Uh, hello. hello. Oh, no. Oh, if you can hear me, you can hear me. That's good. So, in case you were wondering what happened there, I'm going to move to the next slide. I'm go in, case, in case you're wondering what happened there, it's very warm in this room right now. You can't see it, but I'm very sweaty under this hat. Maybe you can't see it. I don't know. We're in HD now. Uh, and the computer overheated, so it had to restart, which is why we dropped out for a little bit and then went straight to the we'll be right back. Um, and then the mic wasn't working, which is why... Because it rebooted and it messed everything up. Yeah. So... Did everybody send in their Hail Mary answers, Charlie? We're still waiting on one team. You know who you are. Suck it, Trebek. What are you doing? You've had all this time. We're giving you a teensy bit longer until we get through the end of the toss-up answers. And then you will have no time. We won't accept it. Send in your Hail Mary answer. Come on. Oh, anyways, we're going to go through the toss-up answers real nice and slow-like, just so we can get Suck It Trebek's answer in, which was what we want. So anyways, what is a group of sloths called? That is, a bed. We also accepted a snuggle, because there are differing sources on this one. Some say it's a bed, some say it's a snuggle. Combine both. It's a snuggle bed of sloths. Are you kidding me? That's adorable. Number two, what was Dwight Eisenhower's middle name? Disappointingly, his middle name was not Dwight Eisenhower. His name wasn't Dwight, Dwight Eisenhower Eisenhower. No, it was David, which is also his son's name, which is where the name Camp David comes from. Fun fact for you. Question number three, which golf tournament rescheduled just yesterday? pins the United States versus Europe every other year. That is, of course, the Ryder Cup. It is not about the male protagonist of Tangled, Flynn Rider, although I wish there was a Flynn Rider Cup. Question number four. The newest national park is White Sands National Park, partially encompassing a nuclear missile range in what southern U.S. state? New Mexico. Whoa, New Mexico. Question number five. CONCACAF is the governing body in North and Central America of what sport? Association football, which is the British way to say it. No, it's soccer. It's soccer, everyone. We're in America. It's soccer. And Charty, do we have an answer from them? We do, which means that we can give the answer for our Hail Mary question, which was the 1920s are sometimes referred to as the Jazz Age. What great American novel author, whose last novel, The Last Tycoon, was finished after his death, coined the term? That was Scott Fitzgerald, also known for writing The Great Gatsby. And guess what? We have a tie for the lead. We don't? I have a tie. One second, our scorekeeper is double checking me on this. See, the top two teams are tied. Am I wrong? Do I need to refresh again? Ugh, great episode we're having, everyone. I'm good. You need to refresh? I'm good. I'm good, okay. So anyways, everybody else's scores. Suck it, Trebek. Sorry, you got last place 15 points, which is our highest last place score. Hot Toddies came in 14th place with 16 and a half. His legs is rotisserie had 17 points in 13th place. Drawing a blank featuring Boomer, 19 and a half points, 12th place. Mac Men and Is This the Krusty Crab tied in 10th place with 20 points. Tied in 8th place, we have Quiz Cats and Sausage Snatcher in 25 and a half points. Tied in sixth place, we have Karen Requests the Fast Facts Manager and Vanilla Bean Vice Team with 31 and a half points. In fifth place, we have Joe and the Ferbers with 33 points. Happy belated birthday to Stu Ferber. Last week was your birthday. Happy birthday. In third place, tied for that, we have the Right Winks and We Like We TV with 37 and a half points. 
And in first place, with 39 points, we have a tie between Gosh Darn Adobe Cancel Fee and Mirabella Madness, which means it's my favorite part of the show. We get to move on to our Hail Mary question. It is Price is Right rules. We get to move on to our Hail Mary tiebreaker, Price is Right rules, closest without going over. If you're dead on, both of you, that would be surprising. We'll figure out what to do if that happens. I don't expect it. Anyways, only Mirabella Madness and Gosh Darn Adobe Cancel Fee. Send in your answers. Two, what year was Fitzgerald's book Tales of the Jazz Age published? Closest without going over. I'm still on. We don't have a, a thing for this because we're just waiting. And who, if you tie and you both get it, whoever gets it in first, obviously that's the winner. Charty's waiting. They speak. Charty speaks. The dead speak, to quote the beginning of Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker. Legally a film. Um... Yeah, perfect time to hype my podcast. If you like movies, listen to my podcast. Both are over. I was informed that both are over, so in that case, we're going to skip Price is Right rules. Who's closest, Charlie? Don't she? I, I heard. Charlie told me. I'll update the scores on the screen. Well, congratulations to, drum roll please, Thank you. Mirabella Madness, you are correct. The answer was, well, you're closest. You're not correct. The answer was 1922. You both went over, but you were closest because when that happens, we have to disregard our own rules. Sure. Yeah, so congrats, Mirabella Madness. I'm winning this week's edition of Fast Facts Live. You will be ensconced in history forever. We're going to carve out a a place for you on Stonehenge. That's where we keep score. We have a tiny chisel and a tiny hammer, and we hammer our names into Stonehenge. Thank you to everybody for playing. Come back on Sunday for Fast Facts Live Sports Special Edition. Answer our polls on how many questions you would like, because we want to give you the best game we can. Thank you to Tom for producing this madness of a show. You're welcome. Yes, hopefully it cools down and we don't have these issues yes maybe that'll work hopefully well tom said he's going to switch programs so hopefully that'll work maybe i don't know charty thank you for keeping score and talking to the teams as always you type so well with your bird wings it's incredible and thank you to all of you for playing this week on fast facts live come back again on sunday and come back next week for another edition I have been Dan O'Keefe. I continue to be Dan O'Keefe. Remember to be safe, stay healthy. If you have the money to donate to worthy causes, donate to worthy causes, because people are in need, and we always want to help people. And with that, we'll see you next week.